and here we go. Oh, well, tonight is a special night for me. I am excited. And uh, you all know I say exactly what's on my mind and how I feel. So if you hear little things like that's my door, that's my husband <laughs> or someone in my family entering in my house and my <laughs> this was not supposed to happen, but you know, things happen. So anyway, tonight I have the wonderful, wonderful um, getting together with a dear friend of mine from many, many years ago. And when you know people are your friend is when you can call them and you haven't seen them in 20 years, you haven't spoken to them, but it's the same gifting that God gave you when you first met that goes on. This is Tracy Williams. She's uh, located in St. Uh, Louis. She's a pastor's wife. She, um, I'm gonna let her tell you about herself. So I'll open it up to you, Tracy. Go right ahead. Thanks for having me, Violetta. I just, I'm so elated because we've done life and ministry years and years ago. Very special time in my life when we lived in Arizona. So it's a pleasure to be here to talk to you face to face via Zoom. And so, yes, yeah, so I'm Tracy Williams. I say I'm a worshiper of Jesus. Um, I'm a pastor's wife a wife of my husband, Aeneas Williams, for 28 years. 28 we got four years. children, three adults at 23, 21, 19, and a 16-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've just written a book, well, two books, The Garden Experience. Um, one's a Christian version, one's for public school. And I have a passion for sexual abstinence. And so I have an organization called The Garden Experience, an abstinence program for girls in public schools and wherever I'm called to speak. But my passion is to let young ladies know that there are other options, that God knew what he was doing when he created sex. And it is a beautiful experience, but it's within those boundaries. And so my heart is to make it um, inviting, practical, not judgmental, but something to um, consider, a new look at, um, of the option of sexual abstinence. So those are things I'm passionate about, Violetta. And I love God's people. I say I'm a cheerleader in a body. You know those Roman 12 gifts. Um, I'm an exhorter. When I found I was an exhorter, my life changed. It made sense that I love to encourage people and build them up. And so I say I'm a cheerleader in the kingdom. So Amen. I'm well, I'm excited because of the fact that um, a few years back, um, I asked Tracy about her um, secret garden declaration and she sent it to me for me to be able to use with my girls and then I saw that she wrote a book so then I, I, I've i learned technically a little bit so I messaged her <laughs> she said she'd be, she would fit she felt wonderful to get on here and talk about that because that's an important subject to me also in my life um, it's something that um, needs to be taught on a daily, 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 daily basis. It's just being a part of life. A lot of times we speak things into our children, but we forget how to teach them. And so with this book, you can learn that. Um, I got on there um, today um, and ordered the books and I'm gonna order each one of those books, one of your books for one of my, for my children that are involved in my program. But what I really wanted you to um, expound on is um, how you learned, how you came to the conclusion, how you learned that conclusion that became so important about what you want to be able to give and exhort into others. Okay. Thank you. So this gives me an opportunity to share about my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom's Bobby Johnson Smith. She's gone on to heaven the past three years. Mm -hmm. But my mother, she was just an awesome woman of God. Um, when my sister and I were sixth grade. You know, I have a twin sister. I'm Tracy, she's Stacy. Mm -hmm. And so I can remember us coming home from school one day, junior high, and some of our friends had been experimenting with boys and they were talking about it. And so we came home and we're like, mom, this was going on. And my mom took a deep breath and she's like, okay, girls sit down. And she began to tell us about the birds and the bees. You know, we used to say that. Um, she used to share, just talk to us about how beautiful sex was. And she gave us a vision of how would it be when you get married and your husband's standing at the altar and you're walking down that aisle and you can say, you know what? I saved myself for him. That'd be a very special moment. She just shared that and she went on to share about the penis and the vagina and all the, the technicalities of it all. Um, but at that moment, Violetta, I literally, it, you know how this says Mary pondered in her heart? Mm -hmm. Sixth grade, in my heart, I set that as a goal. I saw myself being a virgin until I got married at sixth grade. And my sister made that same commitment, but we didn't talk about it. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And so at sixth grade on up, I'll be very vocal. I would say, you know, when girls are talking about stuff, I'd say, well, I'm saving myself. Um, mm -hmm. I want to wait till I'm getting married. And, um, and even when I got my first boyfriend in high school, I'm like, I'm not having sex, it's not happening. So literally those guys, I had three boyfriends in my life, one in high school, two in college, and I'm finally my husband and he is. And that was always the, one of the first conversations I'm saving myself. And so with that, you know, and then meeting my husband and just being true to that message, it wasn't easy because I tell girls all the time, you've got to be bold. You got to be courageous. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be sold out to this. And it's not going to be popular, but the Lord will lead God and direct you. And he'll send other people with like spirits. And that's what God did. He sent other friends along our path that had standards. And so when you feel like you're alone, you know what? God always raised up someone to walk alongside of you. And so that's where my passion came from. My mom used to always share with us. And she, one thing about her, she was always so open. My mom was bold and, you know, those, those moms that tell it like it is. But one thing about her, she listened. Mm -hmm. She created a space for us to be open and honest and share about anything. So she said, when you guys go to college, be careful that French kissing. I mean, she'd be so blunt. Like, <laughs> you know, she'd be like, if you ever feel like you're ready to have sex, come home, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. She just opened this door where we could just talk to her about anything. And so that's what um, I'm so passionate about that because that was a safe space my mom created for us, but everybody doesn't have that. And what I realized is when I go into these schools, the, the couple of school districts that I am in, a lot of these kids have never heard this stuff. No one sat down to talk to them about it. They learn from social media. They learn from watching Netflix. They're clueless. And so I just want to bring back the beauty of sex and there's power in taking it off the, off the table where someone gets to know you for who you are, your true essence. And so that passion comes from my mom. That's her legacy. I'm walking it out. And I'm just so thankful, even with COVID happening, I know you're going to ask me some more, Violetta, but when COVID happened, you know, I've been doing this program for years. I even started it way back in Phoenix. God gave me the message. Mm -hmm. um, it's been 20 years since I've gotten this message from him. It's taken right out of Song of Solomon, chapter four, verse 12. And literally when I read that about the woman being a secret garden, literally I could see a garden gate. I could see a trespasser and a gardener. It's like, he just broke that down to me. And so over time, he's given me several opportunities to share that message. And so, yep, that's where it comes from. The, the, one of the things that I, I caught from that, what you were talking about is taking religion, okay? Yeah. Taking religion out of it, using the scripture, yes. using the, the biblical principles, yes. but taking the religion out of it. And that's what's so important that I caught that I think we need to instill in young people is we got to take the religion out of it. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because that's what they hear when they right. say we need to be abstinent. They hear religion. Um, and I want to know um, when you created the, because I see you, you have one that you say for Christian. And then you have one that you don't just as like you say, just as a public book to go on and whatnot and stuff like that. As you began to write that and as you know, the blueprint began, began to come out and whatnot. Um, how did you feel about going through that transformational walk of being able to do all that? You know, what, what occurred in, inside of your spirit that you wanted, that you knew in your heart that you wanted to give out? Is that a compliment? I, I think I said it the way I need That's to. Good. So when I was in the public schools, I would do it verbally. I didn't have a book. I would literally share from my heart. We get the, the blackboard. We write down what a trespasser looks like, what a real garden, how's a woman like a garden, all these analogies. And so what I found is I wanted to be able to, I think I thought the program would get too big for me. And I wanted to do something for facilitators or something that girls could take away of their journey, the six week, six to seven week journey that we did together walking through the garden, this broad garden analogy of saving sex marriage. And so um, just to tell you how important mentors or other women are in your life, there is another lady who has a girl program in the public schools and I've been walking alongside of her and she's just so inspiring. And I remember having her talking to her about me doing a book because I'm just gonna do like a little workbook for the, just something put together, nothing really major to take for publishing. Um, but as I wrote this out, everything is in my heart for 20 years, all my notes, I had to pull my bag of notes and start writing during COVID. The Lord just put in my heart, like it was literally like he was pushing me, get it done. 
Mm-hmm. So after I started writing stuff, I was like, wow, this is, man, it's a lot of material. Mm-hmm. And God began to give me a heart for the mothers mm-hmm. or the parents, because mm-hmm. just like my mother was able to share this, this open space, you know, I'm giving this to girls in schools, but where's the mothers being able to share their stories. And mm-hmm. so when I gave my draft to um, this mentor of mine, Tracy Berry McGee, mm-hmm. as she read through, she said, Tracy, I see a handbook. I see this is this is like a handbook where girls could work through it. And it's like, and as I start fine tuning it, it's like, wow, I want to write it to girls, but the goal is for moms to walk through it with them. Mm -hmm. And the thing about moms, Violetta, sometimes I find that parents get so, um, they feel awkward and weird and, you know, a little nervous about sharing about sex. Why? Because maybe they, maybe they had different experiences with sex. Maybe they didn't do it the way they want their kids to do it. And so, um, one thing I wanted this book to do is to take that off the, sh- off the, off the table. So all they have to do is walk through the garden. The girl's going to discover the beauty in her. She's going to find out her gifts. She's going to find out her intangible qualities, the things that is the thing about you when you leave a room, what do people remember about you? Because I want girls to know that they're, they're more than a beautiful body mm-hmm. capable of giving sexual pleasure. They are an experience with all these beautiful layers of their personality, you know, their gifts, their purpose, um, those intangible things you can't quite put your finger on, but you remember about the person. And so in this journey, they're filling in blanks, but it's something where moms can walk through and they don't have to share their story unless they're led to, um, because the girl's going to be discovering herself and mom's going to be reading along with her. And so um, that's what I wanted by using other women, sharing it with others who kind of look through the draft for me and said, hey, why don't you add this? Why don't you add that? So it's been a community of people who have helped me get it together. Um, and so the final product is a workbook for moms, facilitators. It can be used in Sunday schools. Um, the public school version just has no scriptures in it. Same principles because the Romans 12 gifts are in there. It just doesn't have scripture reference to it. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, but the Christian version, I was able to throw my own story in it. I got to share about Aeneas and I, you know, being in a situation where the Holy Spirit said, leave now, like get up, go. I mean, like real life stuff, I was able to pour out like the Holy Spirit. And the thing about it, you know, we hear about these spiritual principles about the power of words, right? Power of life and death, yeah. the power of the tongue. I believe since I was sixth grade, I was always saying, I'm going to be a virgin. I'm waiting until I get married. And I believe with all that I am that God, he brought those words. I mean, those words, I think, saved me. I think because I wasn't saved. I wasn't born again. I didn't get born again until college. My twin sister and I both got born again our uh, freshman year in college. And so, but I knew the stories of Jesus. I was in church. I just didn't have a personal relationship, but I wanted to honor. I wanted to honor this vision my mom gave me. And so I believe my words came for me. Yeah. My words kept me. I believe the, the Holy power. Spirit, my words, the power oh. of words. 